Hey everyone, here's a little freebie. I just wanted to help a few people at least get a little bit of a grip on how great of an improvement Photoshop CC is or Creative Cloud. I'm totally impressed. Maybe in Photoshop there's not a ton of new tools, but the new tools and the changes to the tools are making a great difference in the way we now can approach our photos. So let me just hit on a few things. I'm totally improvising here, and I just keep seeing people talking about this issue online, so I decided to uh, just maybe talk about it a little bit here. I'm obviously not going to show you this stuff on one of my worst images, uh, so I chose this one. This is one of my favorite images, uh, one of the greatest displays of light I have ever witnessed, uh, White Pocket in uh, northern Arizona, and it was awesome because... Uh, my buddy and I came here and actually I had spent I think over a week here. I led some workshops and then everybody left and I stayed there and had some sandstorms come in. I just slept in my vehicle all day long and then a really good friend from Vegas came out and visited me and then he came out here. This was actually Easter and this is actually Easter morning when this photo was taken and we had spent the whole day previously walking around everywhere at White Pocket and I've done this many many times just spent entire days walking and trying to find every conceivable thing there and there's just so much to see and I had actually put a couple of rocks down right here to remember this composition. I had done some test shots early on, just like 1600 ISO F22 shots with a 14 millimeter. And this was actually my favorite of all the shots. So funny enough, we wake up in the morning, we come back out here, storms going nuts, a double rainbow. Actually, after I shot this shot, I took off running to the right there and double rainbow. But and then the moon uh, came up and it was right over the mountain, so it was just crazy, crazy elements. In fact, I, I don't know. I've seen a lot of stuff doing this for eleven years now, um, but this was definitely one of the most <laughs> incredible displays of light. So <clears throat> enough about that. Let's get on to some post-production stuff. So I'm just going to improvise again. I have no notebook here. I'm not going to go down any list. That's what I usually do when I'm teaching very carefully, but this is just going to be real quick to help a few people out to help them make the decision whether they want to invest in Photoshop Creative Cloud or not. And I'll tell you, definitely do it. Uh, there's new tools in Camera Raw that I'm really, really liking and in Photoshop itself, especially the new Camera Raw filter. Now someone, uh, one of my students, Skype students from Australia, actually emailed me or, or Facebooked me and just told me, man, you're going to love the Camera Raw filter. At that time when he told me that, I was like, I, I don't know what that means. I mean, I already can import a TIFF into Camera Raw or whatever. But part of it is just conveniency. Now we can just click on a filter and boom, you're in Camera Raw. And everything, all of the algorithms are instantly accessible. So all you have to do is, you know, if you want to, it's always a good idea to duplicate your layers. So what I'm going to do over here. Anyway, so I'm going to duplicate Command J or Control J for PC. I am on a PC right now, although I use PC or Mac. You don't have to do that, but I want to do that. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Filter. And now we have Camera Raw Filter. So um, I'm a big advocate of making shortcuts for everything. In fact, I'm going to close this out for a second and just show you filter, uh, camera raw filter. Everything that I use often, I make a custom shortcut. Uh, years ago, I finally broke down and said, you know what, the shortcuts that Photoshop have are pretty good, but I would rather have like control G for Gaussian blur or control U for unsharp mask or whatever. So I began to just program my own and I, that's what I would advise. So all of the things that you do quite often to speed things up, if you're pulling down menus, pulling down menus, just go to uh, your custom shortcuts. Okay, back to the point. Let's see, so control R. All right, so here we are. The camera raw filter. This is not camera raw per se, it is the camera raw filter. So it is all of the algorithms that are in camera raw, but now you're working on your layer. One of the 
first things that comes to mind for me is that, wow, okay, I could actually duplicate my layer, put it in luminosity mode, and let's say use clarity. Well, clarity, if you haven't noticed already, anytime you add contrast to an image, I'll do it just with the contrast slider, you're going to see the colors intensify. And they not only intensify, they also hue change. So when I'm really particular about my colors not changing or intensifying, I work in either Photoshop's luminosity mode or I go into LAB and I use the L channel. There's arguments for both and actually LAB wins more often than RGB does, but that's another very long discussion and I won't go there. But what the point is, is anytime you add contrast, colors change. Same thing with clarity. You're not going to notice it as much, but colors will change. But now, because we are working on a layer, we can actually go into luminosity mode even before we go into the camera raw converter. So that's a really cool thing. And I've already tested it out and it makes a difference. The colors are not changing. You're not going to be able to do this on the L channel, unfortunately, because when you are in LAB, that filter is not available. Okay, so control J, put it in luminosity mode. And now go to filter, camera raw filter, and you can access any of these things. Um, if you like the algorithm for let's say highlights or shadows or whites or blacks, you can use that here. Of course, remember you're not working on raw data, so it's gonna be different. When you take down highlights, new detail is not gonna form. It's just gonna make whites more toward gray and eventually more toward black. So there's a difference in this for people who are not accustomed to working in the raw dialogue on a TIFF. So anyway, now we can add this clarity to our image. And you know what you could do is you could just add a bunch of it if you wanted to. I used to have, in fact, far before clarity ever came out in Camera Raw, there were different recipes that the gurus were doing in Photoshop using a combination of unsharp mask with a really wide radius and also the blend if sliders to get that middle tone contrast that extra pop that just so is helpful for so many images to get that sort of grayishness out of certain areas of your image so finally the gurus who knew what those algorithms were in Photoshop they finally came up with a way to make it in camera raw called clarity and the first edition was okay had a lot of haloing the next version, this one here, uh, it's vastly improved. doesn't have nearly as much haloing. And it is loosely modeled after what we were doing in Photoshop. But it also has a sort of high pass-like addition to it so that it has a slightly different effect. Now, what I'm saying is I often will use Clarity and RAW. This, is, this has been my workflow for so many years. I often will use Clarity and RAW, kind of in big general areas. I don't get into the real meticulous fine-tuning and finesse in RAW. So I would still have an algorithm in Photoshop that would create that middle tone contrast. In fact, I had had that many years before RAW ever came out. So what I would do is I'd run an action so that I wouldn't have to do the whole blend if sliders in the layer and putting it into the luminosity channel and creating the middle tone contrast I just push a button and boom there would be my clarity layer and it'd be really strong and then basically then I can use that and mask it into certain areas of my image if I want well that has always been my workflow up until Photoshop CC now I don't have to do that anymore because I like this clarity slider as much as my custom middle tone contrast so all I have to do, and you can overdo here if you want to, just jack it up. I know it's ruining my image. The reason it's ruining my image is because my image is done. <laughs> so, I mean, I could see little bits of improvement, maybe a little bit of middle tone contrast right in the middle back there to help draw the eye back. But, you know, the image is done. I just decided to choose a finished image to, to teach with. So anyway, so but you can jack up your clarity. You can jack it up all the way if you want. I'm just not going to jack it up that much on this one. Then I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see that middle tone contrast has been applied to this image, but it's also in luminosity mode. And if I put it in RGB mode, you'll see there'll be an increase in color.
but there's no increase of color here. So for you mask hounds, you can create a mask and of course white reveals, black conceals, and you can paint on the mask and you can keep those masks. I know who you are. Some of you guys send me your work to work on or to evaluate and I am always amazed when I open up a photo and it's just got gobs of layers. I'm just like, I don't know how these guys work this way, but you guys do great work. So, you know, whatever works for you. Now, what I do is I'd work on a live layer. So basically all I would do is I'd flip these boom there and all I would have to do is just take my eraser and choose an opacity and choose a brush hardness or softness so I'd go with a totally soft brush um, I don't know I'm just guessing right now maybe go around 30 percent opacity I'm gonna size up the brush of course your brackets will size your brush I'll tell you a little workaround sometimes the brackets the next to your P on your keyboard your square looking brackets um, sometimes this won't work and I don't know why the people who make the decisions for Photoshop don't fix this one it's one of my pet peeves but it's not you know no big deal all you have to do is go to your toolbox and click off of your tool and back on your tool and then it'll always always work okay if you don't see the tool this is for beginners it means your cap locks are on turn your cap locks off so anyway, I could come in here and I could paint and I'm basically erasing a little bit of middle tone contrast to create a little bit of punch in certain areas of my photo. And you can just paint that in. You probably hardly saw anything happening there, but uh, the image is basically done. So you could go in there in your clouds and punch up a little bit of darkness. I could see an argument for some areas that, you know, this was, I did this photo oh man it's got to be at least three years ago or more so my skills have come up since then there's probably a few little fine tuning touches I'd do to this and if I end up ever totally redoing this from scratch for a gigantic print I've actually have not made a gigantic print of this that's uh, unusual most of my images I've made huge prints uh, 50 inch 60 inch 70 inch in fact I'll click over here to inner chamber uh, this was the original. I've actually worked on this one even more since, but this was the master. And this is a focus stack as well as the other one's a focus stack uh, with the 14 millimeter. Both are the 14 millimeter L2, and they're just impeccably sharp um, because I focused my camera down right on the bottom here, the very closest thing. In fact, when I'm really close to stuff, I will actually sometimes take a tape measure out. You know, people call me meticulous, but I've messed it up before where I focused, I thought that, you know, let's say this middle area on the bottom was the closest thing to me. Later on, I find out because of the wide angle um, and like maybe walls or something, I'm in a slot canyon or something, and uh, it'll actually be like the left side will be closer to me. And it'll be blurry. So the key to this whole focus stacking, depth of field, Focus bracketing is so that we can get the sharpest, sharpest images, and man, they make incredible enlargement. So basically, you focus on the closest thing, you shoot off your bracketed shots, you move your focal ring slightly toward infinity, and you shoot off you know, your bracketed shots again, and you do that again and again and again until you reach infinity, and then with various software, including in Photoshop, you can stack that whole thing together, you can make sure that everything is aligned properly, and you can sandwich it together, throwing away and discarding all of the softer pixels. That's exactly what I did here, and this would make a 70-inch print no problem. Quick overview, basically create a layer, Go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and everything that you had in Camera Raw is now available instantly on a layer. Pretty amazing. Opens up a whole load of possibilities in your workflow, and that's just a couple of them. So that's just a very little bit about Photoshop CC. I wish I could tell you a lot more. Don't have time here, but many new videos are going to be coming out very soon just stay in touch go to wildforlight.com and you're going to see an ever increasing amount of video tutorials there cheers and good luck with your work